In the year 2151, the Klingon Empire received the world's first photon torpedo. If you detonated such a torpedo on the ground, almost everything at a distance of 11 and a half kilometers from the explosion would be destroyed, and the surface of the Earth would turn into ashes. Anyone 27 kilometers away would see a bright flash of light in their windows. After that, within a few seconds, the shockwave would take out the window in their homes. The fireball of the explosion would reach a height of 5 kilometers above the Earth's surface, and its glow would be observable from a distance of up to 1,000 kilometers. Fortunately, photon torpedoes don't exist, like the Klingon Empire. More precisely, they only exist in movies. Photon torpedoes appeared as a science fiction weapon in the Star Trek series in 1966. Well then, humanity's safe and we can relax. Or not. In fact, humanity doesn't know much about how photon torpedoes work. Most of their characteristics are just the fiction of screenwriters. But what seemed impossible yesterday could become a reality today. Many of the technologies that science fiction writers have written about over the past hundred years have become a reality. George Orwell, for example, in the mid-20th century accurately predicted the mass appearance of surveillance cameras in the novel 1984. Hugo Gernsback, in the distant year of 1911, predicted a solar battery. And in the same Star Trek, for the first time, viewers saw handheld communicators, which today we know as mobile phones. Right now, scientists from the European Organization for Nuclear Research, known as CERN, are investigating the main mechanism of photon torpedoes, antimatter. It's thanks to the huge amount of antimatter inside the torpedo by modern standards that the destructive explosion that we see in the movies occurs. When the torpedo reaches its target, the atoms and anti-atoms touch and the torpedo explodes. If you were close Close to the explosion, you would see an unimaginably bright flash of light. When the brightness returns to normal, you would notice that the epicenter of the explosion had turned into an empty space, and everything within 30 kilometers had been destroyed. That's like a nuclear bomb exploding, isn't it? When a photon torpedo with one and a half kilograms of antimatter explodes, approximately 50 megatons of energy in TNT equivalent is released. For example, the Tsar Bomba, which was developed in the USSR during the Cold War and detonated over Novaya Zemlya, released about 58 megatons. It was the most powerful explosion in the history of mankind. The nuclear mushroom cloud rose to a height of 67 kilometers that day. At the same time, the Tsar Bomba weighed 26 and a half tons. That's like seven adult African elephants. To deploy the bomb, it was necessary to modify a military aircraft. With a photon torpedo, everything's easier. It weighs only 250 kilograms, of which the antimatter constitutes just one and a half kilograms. If you really wanted to, you and a friend could drop a torpedo into the courtyard from your balcony. But is it really possible to build a warhead with one and a half kilograms of antimatter? In the year 2010, scientists from CERN were able to literally catch antimatter for the first time in history. By cooling the antimatter in the penning trap to minus 73 degrees Celsius, they were able to capture 38 antimatter atoms and hold them for 172 milliseconds. The next year, scientists were able to hold 309 antiprotons, which were under their control for about 17 minutes. In the entire history of mankind, only 500 septillion grams of antimatter have been harnessed. This is so small that you wouldn't even be able to light a light bulb for one second using the accumulated energy. 
Before you had time to eat lunch, all of the antimatter you'd caught would be annihilated. Another problem is that antimatter mining uses as much electricity as it takes to power a small city. This makes antimatter the most expensive substance on Earth. One gram of antimatter costs $63 trillion. For comparison, the market capitalization of Apple is only $1 trillion. But there's also good news. If we learn to hold at least 300 antimatter atoms every year, in nine septillion years, we'll be able to collect one and a half kilograms of the coveted substance and start an intergalactic war. Perhaps in this century, humanity will discover a way to produce antimatter in large quantities. After all, just 10 years ago, only the theory existed. And today, scientists have synthesized real atoms of real antimatter. However, the photon torpedo has something more than destructive power, near light speed. The so-called warp drive accelerates a photon torpedo to 225,000 kilometers per second. That's three quarters the speed of light. With such an engine in reality, it wouldn't be necessary to extract a huge amount of antimatter to get an explosion. It would be enough to launch a large rock at this speed. When it came into contact with the surface of a planet, it would lead to disaster. Remember the meteorite that fell in Chelyabinsk in the year 2013? It weighed a ton, and its diameter reached 20 meters. When the Chelyabinsk meteorite entered the dense layers of the Earth's atmosphere, the explosive power was 500 kilotons. This is only 1 120th of the power of the Tsar Bomba explosion. But there's a catch. Massive objects cannot move at the speed of light. To do this, you need to have zero mass. Photons, elementary particles of light, have this property. Imagine that your body was entirely made up of photons. Then you could move at the speed of light, but this would have its drawbacks. For example, if you had zero mass, all you could do to amuse yourself would be constantly moving at the speed of light. At this speed, it would only take one second for you to see billions of years pass on Earth. But since you'd be constantly moving at the speed of light, the very concept of time would cease to exist to you. You would be able to travel an infinite distance in space before a single moment even began for you. However, there's one problem. It's impossible to build a spacecraft with zero mass. But there's a solution. We could bend space-time itself around a spaceship so that it could move even faster than the speed of light. How is that possible? Imagine a sheet of paper with two dots drawn on different parts of it. In a linear world, you need to travel a certain distance to get from point A to point B. But if you fold a piece of paper so that both points touch, you can get from point A to point B instantly. This theory was put forward by Mexican physicist Miguel Alcubierre in 1994. Based on Einstein's work, he came up with a hypothesis that we now know as the Alcubierre drive. By placing any object, such as a spaceship, in such a warp bubble, you can compress the space in front of the bubble and expand it behind it. Thus, an object with mass would move faster than the speed of light through space and time. In fact, the spacecraft could even stand still. Space itself would move around it. This can only be done with the help of antimatter. According to physicists' calculations, the formation of the Alcubierre drive requires trillions of times more antimatter than is needed for the explosion of a photon torpedo. Fortunately, this is only a preliminary calculation. 
The theories of physicists and mathematicians continue to improve, and the knowledge of quantum teleportation is expanding every year. NASA has an entire division of EagleWorks Laboratories, which is engaged in the study of the Alcubierre Drive. Laboratory specialists periodically publish the results of their activities, but no real breakthrough has yet occurred. Nevertheless, the nature of spatial wormholes has become clear to humanity. Scientists have already learned how to teleport quantum particles over long distances and are getting closer to solving this phenomenon every day. Today it sounds like science fiction, but it's possible that in the near future, people will use a spatial teleport in the same way we use ordinary smartphones today. In modern realities, this development of science seems more logical than trite explosions. You wouldn't have to build super destructive weapons either. Star Trek fans know that photon torpedoes were often modified, antimatter warheads were removed, and instead of these, sensors were installed on the torpedoes which helped study the expanses of the universe. If scientists manage to create the Alcubierre drive in reality, humanity will be able to make a device to study interstellar space. When we learn how to create wormholes, people on Earth will learn about what the universe has hidden from them throughout its existence. Perhaps we should stop the constant and pointless arms race and start exploring space in new ways. Who knows? Maybe in a hundred years, people will be destined to meet extraterrestrial life forms and embark on a new path of development of civilization. Do science, not war. And as always, thank you for your attention.